Hey guys, welcome back to the Uncle Sharma channel. We are here for the first ever episode of Hinter Stories, a new segment of the channel focusing the spotlight on one of the players of our beloved Nerazzurri. In this debut episode, we are going to shine a spotlight on our Croatian regista, Marcelo Brozovic, aka Mr. Crocodile, aka Epic Brozzo, the boy from Zagreb, the boy with the thorn in his side. Fresh from his contract renewal with Inter, tying him to the club till 2026, and now he is the longest serving player in the squad after Andanovic and Ranocchia. Felt like it was the perfect time to take a look back at Brozovic's story at Inter. Uh, so let's get into it. The story of Marcelo Brozovic. Brozovic's footballing journey began in his hometown of Zagreb in Croatia. Always in love with football, with little interest towards school, he slowly started climbing the footballing ranks until reaching Dinamo Zagreb where he started to make a name for himself and earn himself a call up to the national team and of course started to earn the interest of clubs around Europe. One of those clubs of course, Inter on January 24th, 2015, right in the middle of the banter era into come calling signing him for a three million loan and a redemption set at five million euros an absolute bargain he came with the tag of a promising box-to-box -box midfielder although adaptable to different positions as well and he was often compared to frank lampard in his home country a comparison which he actually embraced in his first ever press conference when he joined inter where you can see him alongside roberto mancini who According to reports, handpicked him uh, after watching uh, scout videos of him. Bleach blonde hair and a shy demeanor. Little did he know the roller coaster career he was about to embark on at Inter. And little did Interisti know that this guy was about to turn into one of the most iconic and idolized players in recent history. His career with the Nerazzurri actually has been befitting of Inter as a club. Pazza, crazy. He went from being one of the most hated and polarizing players in the team being one of the most loved players by the fans and one of the key leaders within the team. Initially, his low-key signing was overshadowed by the big money signing of Shakiri, but Marcelo managed to make a quick positive impact in Roberto Mancini's team, showing a well-rounded game and adding a goal-scoring ability from midfield. Off the pitch, he didn't struggle to fit into the dressing room thanks to the strong Balkan presence at the time. Kovacic, Ljajic, Jovetic, Andanovic and of course, Ivan Perisic. In the following seasons, Brozovic continued to show glimpses of quality, being one of the few midfielders in the team with long range shooting ability and willingness to get into the box with late runs. However, the flashes of brilliance weren't very regular, coupled with his seemingly carefree attitude and indolence on the pitch. His body language was sending Inter fans all the wrong signals. The trademark shrugging, moaning and arm throwing is very familiar for Interisti, am I right? He also ended up creating the trademark epic Brozzo celebration, but his performances on the pitch were not always so epic. On the other hand, the running stats always showed a high work rate and commitment. On average, he was one of the highest runners in Serie A consistently, but was he using that running efficiently? Mm, probably not. The 2016-17 season was probably his lowest point at Inter, falling out with coach Frank De Boer due to his behavior on social media, general poor attitude for which he was actually suspended for. Following season under Spalletti, Inter were finally thriving, playing well consistently, but Brozovic still looked like he didn't quite fit into the team. Spalletti tried him in a number of positions, especially in the number 10 or the trequartista role many times, but once again, the experiment failed aside from a couple of flashes here and there. The final nail in the coffin seemed to be when he was booed off by the Meazza faithful in a match against Bologna. The Croatian did not respond well to the reception he got from Inter's fans and sarcastically clapped them as he walked off with tensions mounting between player and club. In January, the transfer window opened and Sevilla came calling and on the eve of the transfer deadline day, they presented a loan with option to buy, which Inter were almost ready to accept. Marcelo was ready to fly to Spain until Luciano Spalletti stopped everything and pulled the plug on the deal. Coach Spalletti insisted that the 25 year old to be kept and this turned out to be the sliding door moment of Marcelo's career. Spalletti's faith finally paid off a few months later when Inter faced Napoli at the Meazza Stadium where he deployed Brozovic in the deep line playmaker position in front of the defence in the midfield two paired with Roberto Gagliardini. Brozovic in that match showed intelligence, passing range, tackling and most of all concentration in a way that we had never seen before, a true regista performance. 
Brozovic was reborn. He finally found his position on the pitch and Inter finally found a quality regista, a type of player that was missing since Thiago Motta left the team. Spalletti himself admitted he would be a fool to move him from there now and quite rightly he never did. That summer in 2018 Brozovic went on to becoming a linchpin for Croatia's midfield as well where alongside Perisic he reached the World Cup final. Antonio Conte came along and he instantly recognised his importance as well making him one of the untouchables of the starting 11 and the vice captain of the team. And when you think back to just two years before being booed off by the whole stadium Fast forward to February 2020 where he leads the team wearing the captain's armband in the absence of Hananovic, scoring the goal that ignited Inter's comeback from 2-0 down to winning 4-2. What a turnaround. The rebirth of Marcelo can also be attributed to the birth of his baby daughter Aurora. It is a well-known fact that getting married, having kids, makes you a more responsible person, calms you down and this was also confirmed by his agent. The social media antics off the pitch have also stopped, replaced with mainly posts about his family and Inter. Although he's known for his entrepreneurial spirit, owning a darts bar in Croatia, one of his uh, passions off the field, and also being a very uh, prominent investor in cryptocurrency, the relationship that he's developed with Nicolo Barella is also a great source of amusement for Interisti. The friendship on and off the field is clear to see and has benefited Inter's midfield chemistry for sure. Since his rebirth, he's become a pillar of the team, becoming absolutely vital. I mean, just look at these statistics by Opta. Touches, passes, tackles, second assist. He's in a class of his own in Italy. Brozo has without a doubt become the best regista in the Serie A and one of the best in Europe. His contract renewal now makes him one of the highest earners in the squad and he fully deserves this because without their midfield metronome, Inter just don't hit the same. As some people say, no brozzo, no party. Sometimes crazy, sometimes genius, mostly a crazy genius, our one and only epic brozzo.